Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is time to review last week's reveals from Ursula's Return and holy, there are a lot. There are a lot of cards that were revealed. So this one's going to be a long one. So sit tight, grab a snack. Uh, I've went through these cards. I've even proxied a couple of these cards, got a few games in. And uh, some of these cards are really, really good. And I'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and get started. And please like, comment, subscribe. That'd be really cool. So we'll start here with the new Flounder with uh, support. And if you have a character named Ariel in play, pay one less to play this character. Effectively making it a two drop, two to the quest for two. It's okay. It's nothing crazy. Uh, I don't like this card. We'll see any real play. Uh, we assign the scroll. Each opponent may choose and discard a card. For each opponent who doesn't, you gain two lore. Cards like this are really good in multiplayer. They won't really see any play in regular play. So I, it's cards like this that make me think that Ravensburger is going to start to push the envelope a little bit on the multiplayer play in set four. I hope I'm right. And that, that's it. That's, uh, otherwise, this card is a three drop action that's either they discard a card or you gain two lore. Which is still like okay, but like nothing crazy. Signed contract. A two inkable item. Whenever an opponent plays a song, we draw a card. This is a great anti-meta card for the song meta. This is a fantastic card. It actually punishes the opponent for playing songs. I think this card will be included in decks for sure in Emerald. And if we get a side deck, this is that this will definitely go in there at some point. Ursula's Garden. This card's a bit wacky. It's a four drop location, uh, two moves, seven toughness, one lore. While you have an exerted character here, opposing characters get minus one lore. This is really interesting because this card is is a uh, kind of kind of mean. Like imagine you have some kind of evasive dude in Ursula's garden. It all of a sudden becomes a lot harder for that to be eliminated. If you resist, it becomes a lot harder to get rid of. You know, I haven't tested this card yet, but I think this card is potentially see meta play, just because of how. Uh, annoying it's going to be to play against like all you have to do is have an exerted character there you get rewarded for questing with your character and then you also get rewarded because your opponent's characters will quest for one less it's a card that reduces the viability of aggro strategies because there's a lot of aggro decks that can win like turn five like turn five turn six consistently i'd say this uh card if you get a turn four is uh pretty wild so uh i don't know if it's a little bit too slow but it is good. I expected to see some play. Uh, we have Mythical Rose. Mystical Rose, sorry. Two drop inkable item, banishes item. Children character named Beast gets plus two lore this turn. If you have a character named Bell in play, move the three damage counters from chosen character to chosen chosen character. Um, yeah, I don't. Th this card obviously combos well with beasts. Uh, it combos really well with the Emerald Beast, for sure. Uh, but any beast is really fine with it. Uh, this card potentially might be really cool right now. But depending on if we get better beasts as well, maybe this card gets a lot better. It also does a little bit of a damage moving thing, which is cool. We saw that introduced a little bit in uh, set three, and now it's coming back with stronger numbers, which is okay. Uh, I expect this card to see play at some point. Maybe not like this set, depending on what we get, but in the future, it, does, it definitely reads well for future support. Uh, Magic Broom, another one here. Another Steel one. Don't forget. It seems like Am Am Amethyst Steel is your Magic Broom deck. A 2-drop angle 2-3 that quests for 1, and it gains Evasive during your turn. Uh, not really a big deal, just another Broom. But getting Evasive can help, so I guess it's okay. You'll stick it in your Broom deck. Hercules is a 3-drop, three 3-3-1 three, three, with Rush. It's okay. 4-drop uh, Muses, 2-4, quest for 1, Ward. When you play a song, return to a character with 2 attack or lesser player hand. This is another anti-aggro card. This one's a little more a little more restricting, I'd say. Not probably as good as this. But uh, I can see someone trying to play this. I don't think it's that good, though. Uh, we have Snuggly Duckling. Two drop, inkable, two to move, nine toughness, location with no lore. When a character with three attack or more challenges another character while here, gain a lore. The challenging character has six attack or more, gain three lore instead. This is incredibly abusable. Um, here's how I see a card like this working. In Ruby, you have a lot of cards that ready your characters, but they can only attack. Okay. 
In Steel, you have plenty of cards that give you resist. So if you can somehow just have, if an opponent can have a body, a big body there, with six attack or more, uh, you can gain three lore and just chip away, chip away a little bit. It's 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 a little awkward because it requires a lot of setup. Because of that, I don't think it's going to see a whole lot of play. But you know, if we ever get some kind of crazy like combo, this card could see some crazy play. We have Brawl. An action match shows the character two attack or less. I don't think it's that good. Gunther. Four drop and global three through the quest for two. When this character is challenged and banished, each opponent uh, chooses one of their characters and return that card to their hand. Again, better multiplayer, but uh, not really that good, honestly. Tor, five drop, four through the quest for one. Not that good. Ursula. Four drop, two, four, quest for two. All right, this is when things get interesting. First of all, its effect is whenever this character quests, chosen opponent reveals their hand and discards a non-character card of your choice. Uh, honestly, not bad. You can shift onto the character, quest right away, look at their hand, discard a non-character card. That's pretty wild. What's interesting is now we enter a phase of new shifters. Up until set three, shift was a mana uh, mana, mana pay in order to play and shift. But now we have shift, discard a song card. This is really interesting. Um, a lot of people are going to look at these alternative costs that we talk about, discard a card, and they're going to say they're bad. Uh, anyone that thinks that is actually wrong. This is a way to shift without using mana. And in a game that generates you lots of advantage, discarding cards is not a big deal. How I see a card like this working is uh, an Amber Emerald Song deck when you're using things like Ariel as well as things like the Green Ursula from set three and you're really just taking care of really powerful stuff with Ursula and playing hand control as well. That's how I see the deck rolling out. Again, we don't know everything in the set yet, but this card reads really well and I'd be surprised if it didn't see any amount of play. Flotsam and Jetsam. I love this card so much. So it's a six drop by itself, five out of the quest for two. And uh, by the way, you can still pay these cards regular costs and play them, right? If you don't want to discard a song card, because you want to play this for four, you want like you don't want to you want to keep your song card in hand, whatever. Go ahead. It doesn't really matter. It's flexible, which has always been the cool thing about shift characters. Anyway, I'm gonna go back to this. Flotsam and Jetsam. So this card is a little bit expensive, but it's a 5-5 five, five that quests for two. And uh, you discard two cards to shift, and this character counts as being named both Flotsam and Jetsam. Uh, I want to do a real quick look to see what this looks like, because this deck is turning uh, into um, slivers, it looks like. Uh, we have here one that gives others rush, one... That's really funny. That's I didn't know this card existed. Wow. Huh. Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, we have a Jet Slam that gives evasive, and then you get plus three attack, and you get um, a ward. So we have a lot of decent ones right now. So if you get a bunch of these on the board and then play this, you know, you could have rush with ward, with plus attack, uh, with evasive. And that's just what the cards we have right now. Obviously, there's going to be more of these cards coming out. So, I I'm, I don't know if this will see play right away. Depends if we get more support or not. But, like, maybe invest in some foil Flotsam Jetsam cards. Because they might be worth something, you know, down the road. If they make this really good, right? And the foils aren't worth that much, honestly. Diablo. This card's our first legendary card of the day. It's a three drop uninkable two to the quest for one with shift discard in action. And the card has evasive and also has during each opponent's turn rather draw a card while this character is started, you may draw a card. Uh, I can tell why this card's legendary because so if this card's exerted and they draw for their turn, correct me if I'm wrong, but you also draw a card. 
That's crazy. Like, and if they draw more cards, really good. If they can't answer this, it's going to keep netting new cards. This card's broken. Assuming it works the way I think it does, and I see no reason why it doesn't. Uh, this, this is crazy. This is insane. Especially in multiplayer. Like, you, you do a turn... I, I, I don't know. If we're going to get another Diablo, obviously. Maybe you can do this turn two or something. But you play your Diablo turn three, find a way to exert it somehow, turn four... And then your opponent has have to action it, otherwise you're drawing a whole bunch of cards. Mm -hmm. This card's crazy good. Very, very, very strong card. Uh, Li Shang, three drop, three two, the quest for one with shift discard a character. And your characters with four attacker more get plus one more. Uh, it's definitely a build around for, for sure. I think it's the weakest card so far, the ones we've read, uh, with this new shift. And then we have Olaf, three drop, one four, the quest for two with shift discard an item. Whenever he quests, each of the other characters get plus attack equal to this character's attack for the turn. This is also a build around. Not very good, but if you can like boost his attack, then he's obviously very this very threatening card. And finally, for the last shift cards, we have Aladdin. A three drop, three three quest for one with shift discard location. Whenever this character quests, you may banish a chosen item. It's an item and the anti-meta card, which might see play because you know Lucky Diamond, other item struts are really good right now. So it depends. It really does depend, but it might see some really good play. We'll see. It's only a three drop too. Like it's you can just throw in your steel decks, honestly. All right, moving right along here, we have uh, a song. Big Big King Undisputed. I like what they're doing with the songs. By the way, they're splitting up Disney songs into verses, and those verses are the names of the cards. So, like, we'll never run out of songs in this game. Because this is from Be Prepared, and this is a line from that song as well. Uh, and there's the, the Teeth and Ambitions or whatever, I think. I might be off a little bit of my Lion King knowledge. But it is really cool to see that we have no issues of songs. Because I remember when the game was first starting, and I actually talked to the other content creators. There's a conversation point at one point saying, maybe they'll run out of songs at some point. But no, nah, they're never going to. Anyway, 4-Drop Uninkable Song... Uh, each opponent chooses and banishes one of their characters. It's not bad. It's a good card. It'll see play. Uh, we had a 4-drop Inkable Song, Lost in the Woods. Uh, all opposing characters minus 2 attack at the start of your next turn. It's a really good anti-meta card, really good board control card. Because if you go wide, 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 uh, you're going to be fine. But to just sing this and they can't exert your get attack or exert your characters back with anything significant... I think the card's okay. It might see a splash. This card. I love this card. Treasures Untold. A six-drop song, Inkable. Return to two item cards from your discard to your hand. This card will be a four of in your item decks. Absolutely. Positively. This card is insane. It's very good value. Very, very good value. We have so many item cards that are so good, but they banish in order to use themselves. This card adds them back. It's really good. Imagine this in a deck with like Lady Tremaine and do it again in Emerald. If there's some kind of like Emerald Sapphire song deck or item deck, sorry, that you could make and repeatedly use this card, repeatedly use your items. Whoa. Oh, I think there's a lot of uh, testing to be done with this card. I think there's going to be a lot of shenanigans with it. We have Seldom All They Seem, a two-drop inkable song. Children character minus three attack this turn. I don't think it's very good. Worse than this card. Ariel, four-drop, three, three requests for two with Singer Seven. Not bad. It'll see some play in songs. Nothing crazy, though. Uh, Sisu, a three-drop inkable, one for a quest for two. This character gets plus one attack for each card in opponent's hands. This card is... Once again, better multiplayer. This card is one big attack on glass cannon. This, this card will kill anything in battles. And I think that's really cool. It'll see play because of that. Uh, for sure. Cricky. 5 drop, inkable, 3, 4, the quest for 3. When you play this character, the other character gets a plus 3 attack this turn. Really good effect if you're going wide. It'll allow you to break some boards. And then on next turn, you get to actually like quest with this card for 3. Not bad. Might see play. Uh, next, we have Jack. Three drop, one for the quest for two. When you play this character, chosen opposing character gains reckless during the next turn. 
It's like a cheaper John Silver from the first set that you can't also do in a quests. I don't think it's going to see any play. We have uh, Raja, 4 drop, Inkable, 3, 4, a quest for 2. We have no cards in your hand. Characters with 4 costs, 4 less, can't challenge this character. I do not think this card is... It's okay. I don't think it's worth uh, anything too crazy. Because characters they can't challenge can obviously quest or challenge other things. Uh, I think this card's not that good. Uh, TikTok, 6 drop, 4, 7 quest for 1 evasive is nothing. Con, 2, 3, 2 quest for 1 is okay. Uh, Ursula's Lair here. Uh, this card is wild. It's a 3 drop, uninkable uh, location, 2 move, 6 toughness, 1 lore. Whenever a character is banished and challenged while here, you may return them to your hand. And characters named Ursula get plus one lore while they're here. This card will see play. I fully expect Ursula Tribal to be a thing in set four, and it's going to play four of this card. And it's going to be a good deck. Though, with everything I'm seeing right now, it's wild. Uh, Mob Song. Okay, this is another twist on previous mechanics. Sing together. Any number of your. Teammates care you are your teammates characters. Multiplayer? Anyone? With total cost ten or more, make exert sing the song for free. And it says sing together ten. Deal three damage to the three chosen characters and or locations. Um The card's fine. It is. It's a fine card. I don't know how good it will be. It's effectively 9 damage, but I don't know. I think this card might not be a 4 of, but you might throw it in your steel decks. Look at this family. We have a 7 drop Inkable sing together. Look at the top, top 5 cards of your deck. And reveal the 2 character card, put them in your hand, the rest of the bottom of the deck. Uh, not too bad. Again, you'll see a little bit of play, but nothing too crazy. Uh, it's fine. Second star to the right. 10 cost. Chosen, char chosen player draws 5 cards. This will see play. Absolutely. Draw five for free. And I know, I know. There were people when this game started, and I kept talking about front of their side, being a pot of greed for free, and people were like, well, actually, uh, you have to exert a character, so it's not free. It, it's free. And this card, on the scale it's on, is also free. Um, and it will see play. For sure. Um, we have here under the sea, eight drop uninkable song. Put all opposing characters with two attack or less on the bottom of the player's deck in any order. This is another aggro anti meta card, the best one that we've seen actually so far. This one might be included in your deck as maybe a one or two of to help you against the aggro, cheap aggro stuff. But uh, that's it. We have next a pirate's life. Each opponent loses two lore, you gain two lore. Not a big deal. Not a great song. Nah. Uh, dig a little deeper. So, uh, sing together eight. Look at the top seven cards of your deck. Put two into your hand. What's on the bottom of the order? Deck of any order. Um, this card is obviously better than this look at your family card. Because it adds anything and it's from top seven for the additional cost of being uninkable and one extra sing together. Which is not a big deal at all. I think this card's going to see play because it's really good. Um, all right. Moving on to other things now, we have Elsa. Children character gets Challenger 2 and Rush this turn. Not a bad aggro trick for Amethyst. You might throw it in your decks. Uh, the Wall. 4-drop Inkable 2 to move 8 Toughness. Weapon is other character here. Your other locations can't be challenged. Um, I think that's not too bad. I think it'll see a, like a little bit of play. It's obviously a location that you'll splash into your other heavier location-based decks. Uh, to try to prevent them from being challenged. It's not too bad, and it'll, it'll see a little bit of play. Just a defensive card. Um, three drop Ling. Three through the quest for one. Your, your hero card does get plus one attack. Uh, not that good. Uh, five drop, four, seven, one lore bodyguard. Chan Po. po. Not really good. Uh, chai Fu. Three... Oh, we're almost done. Wow. We're almost there. Uh, three drop Inkable. Zero for the quest for one. While you have no damage. Well, it's because there's no damage. It gets plus two lore. Uh, I don't hate this card. Uh, there's lots of ways to heal damage, move damage. Lots of ways to get the resist. Um, it's not a bad trick for a three drop getting three lore. As long as it's properly set up, I think this card actually does see a little bit of play. 
Imperial Proclamation. So one drop item inkable. When one of your characters challenges another character, you may pay one less for the next character you play this turn. Uh, it's also not a once per turn effect. So like, it you do a lot of challenging in Ruby, obviously, and this just lets you get a wider board out there. Uh, card will see play for sure. We have here Vision Slab, three drop inkable item. Start your turn if opponent supposing character has gains has damage, gain one lore. That's wild. And then damage counters can't be removed. It It's an anti-meta item that also gets you lore. Now, damage counters being removed is, uh, you know, a very niche thing, obviously. Uh, but it's also there for the lore. I think it's good enough to see play. Especially in this Emerald Sapphire item deck that I'm slowly starting to cook. Just a, just a, a little bit. A little bit of cook. A little cook happening. And finally, Bruno's Return is a two-drop uninkable action. Return a character from discard to hand. They wrote the two damage from chosen character. Not a bad card. Might see a little bit of play. Maybe. Return sure characters is good. So maybe. Maybe. Maybe a little bit of play. Okay. That'll do it for today. That's a lot of cards that were revealed last week, honestly. And uh, let me tell you, there are some real bangers Uh in these and as well as the new mechanics right like i think like things like dig a little deeper and second to the right can really well abuse the uh sing together mechanic which is really nice ursula's lair is obviously an insane card um we have here like other good songs like short and untold that can't be undisputed good meta cards the shift discard card cards are really good uh, i'm a really big fan of diablo float seven jet seven ursula uh, and it will know. We know we're gonna get more cards like this in the future too. So it's it is power creep. We are re witnessing power creep firsthand in this set. Power creep is going very hard in this set. Uh, I don't know how hard it will get, but like it's pretty creepy. It is. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Was there anything else here? I like Ursula's Garden. I like Mystical Rose, and I like Signed Contract again. Another emerald item, by the way. Uh, anyway, lots of banger cards were revealed this time around. Uh, lots of potential meta implications. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!